we're about to look at here uh, is an extended clip from My Best Rivals with Kyle Dake and David Taylor. And if you ever wanted to know what it was like to take a car ride with Kyle Dake, well, this is your opportunity. Uh, it's about a 10, 15 minute piece from the hotel in State College. We follow along with Kyle Dake in the car over to the M2 Training Center where he goes and trains with David Taylor for an entire day. And he kind of talks us through the relationship, the, uh, the friendship turned rivalry, turned bitter rival, turned friends and teammates again. So uh, enjoy it. And we're off. I don't have a stop sign there, brother. So if you just want to talk a little yep. bit about, uh, actually, let's wait till we. <clears throat> How far are we in this place? Uh, about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Pull this up a little bit. Yeah, let's see, let's just. Oh. Alright, so. Where are we going? So we're headed off to, uh, M2 Training Center to work out with David Taylor um, down here in State College. He's got a, it's actually a new facility. When I was down here last time, they were just moving in and, you know, I helped roll out all the mats and, and get everything situated. <clears throat> David, David's more of a, uh, uh, a grand scheme type of guy where, you know, he's got all these great ideas and the execution of putting the mats down is not in, and not in his repertoire. Um, so I hopped up in the truck, started moving all the mats, getting everything going, and you know, we, get, we eventually got everything where it needed to be. But uh, it's just funny, funny how different we are, but how similar we are at the same time. Can you talk a little bit about your history with David Taylor? Like who he is to you and... Yeah, so for a long time, um, David and I didn't really know each other, you know, when we were kids. Growing up, he was always, always the kid who won every tournament. Um, you know, he was he was always the the best guy out there. He was getting a bunch of different takedowns, pinning everybody, taking everybody. You know, and and for me, I was just a little guy, and you know, we were the same size, but I didn't I didn't have the same level of success he did when we were younger. And you know, I would always I would, I would do well, um, but never you know never on his level. And then uh, when we got to high school, uh, I was on the same <clears throat> same side of the bracket as David at at Fargo at uh, Cadet Nationals, and we ended up. Oh, there's a bee. Yeah, go outside. Go, go. Yes. Anyway, so we were on the same bracket, same side of the bracket at Nationals, and. Um, you know, we, we had one, so how it was is they had pools back then. And we had all, we had won all of our matches uh, leading up to the final match. So David and I were the, the last two to wrestle in our pool in Greco. And uh, I won the first period, and then he won the second period, and then the third period, he ended up winning. But I headlocked him to his back and had him pinned. He hooked my leg and rolled me through. and. The ref didn't see it. Had they saw it, it would have been over. But they didn't see it, so. And then I ended up losing the period, so I lost the match. I was devastated. Um, but Dave was just like, duh, 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 whatever, whatever. And then later that week, we wrestled the freestyle tournament. And <clears throat> David was, w was way better at freestyle than he was at Greco. And I was probably better at Greco than I was at freestyle just because I trained it more than the other people or other kids throughout the country uh, uh, train Greco. My, the head coach at Shamrock Wrestling <clears throat> was Scott Green. He was a big, big fan of, of wrestling Greco, and he just saw all the benefits of, of using those techniques for both folk style and freestyle. So, um, you know, we spent a lot of time practicing um, the Greco-Roman style of wrestling. So I was better there, <clears throat> and... But when we wrestled freestyle, he took me down in like, I don't know, 10 seconds maybe, and then ripped my back in half with a bone arrow, even quicker, I think. And uh, I ended up <clears throat> not finishing the match. And it was, the last, it was the last match of the first day. And then 
I went, you know, went home or went to the trainer, whatever, whatever. I was fine. And then the next day I ended up taking third. So I took, Dave took first, I took third in Greco. Then Dave took first in freestyle and I took third in, in freestyle. So um, he was my mortal en enemy ever since. And then when we got to college, <clears throat> uh, well, we never wrestled again through high school. And then when we got to college, um, he was at Penn State and I was at Cornell. And, you know, I, I had a feeling that we were going to be at different weights. He was a lot taller than I was. Um, he still is. And my freshman year, I was at 41 and he redshirted and he went 57 that year. And then the next year I went 49, he was still at 57. So, you know, I won my second national title and he, he went undefeated into the finals and ended up dropping, dropping his match in the finals uh, to one of his former teammates. Uh, actually, I don't even know if they were teammates. It doesn't matter. But then the next year he went up to 165 and I went up to 57 again. And then we both won and he just killed everybody. And he, it was just, it wasn't even close for him. And then um, the following year is when the, the Dake Taylor saga began, you know, rekindled and really what people remember. Um, but the first time we actually wrestled wasn't our senior year. Um, it, was, it was the year before at Olympic team trials and we wrestled in freestyle again and I ended up beating him. I <clears throat> got a touch pin. Um, he was in a single leg. I kind of hit a cut back into a cradle and then um, got, got a pin. And, you know, then the next year we were, you know, he was going to, he was going to go on to be a national champ at 65. I was going to go on to be a national champ at 57 again. And then, you know, people were hyping up this super match between David and I at the All-Star Classic. And <clears throat> Coach Cole was like, why, why, not, why not go wrestle him? I'm like, okay, I'll go wrestle him. So then went up, wrestled him, beat him in, I think it was overtime. Um, and it was, you know, it was a really close match. And Coach Cole brought me into his office after that match. I was like, listen, our team's better. We have a better chance of, of winning, getting a trophy if you go 165 this year. Um, and I was like, okay, what, you know, whatever. I want to, I had never won a team national championship and I wanted to win. I wanted to have our team win. And I knew we had a, a decent chance. Um, we had some, we had some studs that year and, um, Steve Bozak was a returning national champ. I was back. We had, uh, Mike Nevinger was still there. Chris Villalonga who ended up becoming an all American. Um, Nashawn Garrett was there. We had, we had a bunch of studs and, had, had everyone performed, you know, we thought we had a, a real ch shot at winning a national championship. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, that kind of led into, okay, you know, that was a really razor close match between David and Kyle. Let's get them, let's get them at Southern Scuffle because that's the next time they'll meet. So that all year, you know, I had typically been focused on managing my weight and making sure I was good there, but I was always trying to get better. And, and, and that year I didn't have to manage my weight at all. So all the energy that went into weight management and, and making sure that I was, you know, healthy went into make sure I'm healthy and figure out how to beat Dave again, you know, figure out how I can get better and, and dominate so that I can, I can win my fourth national title. <clears throat> so, you know, the whole, the whole saga plays out. I beat him in a, another razor close match at the Southern Scuffle. We make it to the NCAA finals. They, they changed the whole order. They had never done it before of the finals match to keep everyone in their seats. They wanted to watch David and I, they wanted to see who was, who was going to come out on top. And, uh, you know, I ended up, I ended up winning that match. He got the first takedown, you know, I, it was just a, it was a crazy match. And then after that, for the next couple of years, 2013, 13 we wrestled again, 14 I was out um, with a shoulder sur or uh, foot surgery, 15 we wrestled again, 16 we both decided to go up a weight class, we wrestled again, and then 17 I decided to go back down. Um, after my shoulder injury, I had sh shoulder surgery at the end of 2016, lost a lot of weight. Um, <clears throat> 
And then as I came back into wrestling, I, I almost instantly put it right back on. But we decided that it would be best for me to go uh, 74 kilos. And David went 86. We ended up both, you know, being super close to making our first world team and just came up short, both of us. And, you know, it was, it was that year, this past year, 2017, end of 2016, 2017, that we realized we would be at different weights again. And that's where we both started picking up the, picking up the idea that we wanted to start training more together because we knew, we knew we both had a lot to offer one another. And, you know, his style of wrestling is, you know, condition, conditioning and technique. He wants to wear you out and, and put a lot of points up on the board with a variety of, of attacks. You know, my, my strategy is, you know, go out and, and be physically dominant and more athletic and, and powerful and, and score points, score as many points as I can that way with score them in bunches. And, uh, you know, so I started to adapt some of David's style and he's starting to adapt some of my style, just being a, you know, a physical presence out there and making, forcing our positions. Um, so I like to think I've had a, a decent influence on, on the way he's wrestling now. Um, obviously he, deserves all the credit and his coaching staff and his team um but i feel like i'm i'm a little bit a part of his team now just like i feel that he's a part of my team uh which is pretty cool because you know rarely do you get a situation where you know you have these two elite level athletes um trying to go for the same thing but are you know fortunate enough to be on on the same team so that's kind of that's kind of where we're at present day um always kind of just collaborating with one another and, and trying to um, be the best that we can be.